I'm Pat Duga. Today we're going to look at different types of studies, particularly sample surveys, experiments, and observational studies. We're going to look at how they're different and what their purposes are. We're finally going to look at how these types of studies can determine whether the differences in things are significant. So let's look at some definitions uh, important in using studies. First of all, the population is the entire group that we're looking at. Um, for example, in a United States election, the, the, uh, the population would be all the registered voters in the United States. Uh, the sample is the group of people that we select from the population for the study. Um, for example, if we were doing a poll of, of voters, and maybe we chose 1,000 voters in a certain way from the United States, that would be the sample. Uh, where the population was the entire group of registered voters, the sample is just the 1,000 voters we're using for the poll. Bias is a tendency to over or under underestimate a value in a study, and it's almost always there. Um, we One of the jobs of statistics is to make bias as small as possible so we can have as good a, a result for our study as, as possible. We're going to look at the three types of, of studies. Surveys uh, allow us to collect data from a, the sample of a population and find out their characteristics, behaviors, or opinions. For example, uh, the student council might do a survey of students to find their opinion on something. An experiment is designed to measure the effects of something. Uh, and to do that, we have to divide a sample into two groups, an experimental group where we actually take that and, and, and put the effect on them and measure that effect, and then what's called a control group that does not receive the effect. So we can really statistically determine the differences between those two. In an observational study, we're looking at members of a sample that are measured and observed without being affected by the study. An example of that might be uh, researchers looking at a group of teenagers using different types of electronic devices and noting their reactions. We're not doing anything to the population or to the sample, we're just observing. So let's look at classifying those three different types of studies. Determine whether the situation describes a survey, experiment, or an observational study. Then we're going to identify the sample. Retro Movie Theater wants to determine what genre of movies to play. Uh, genre is things like comedy, sci-fi, whatever, during the next year. They plan to pull 50 random area residents and ask them what their favorite movies are. Well, this is a survey because we're collecting data um, from the participant members' responses to the poll. Now, the sample is the group of people that are actually selected. That's the 50 people from the area. And the population is the entire area. So sample is a group of people that we've selected from a population, which is the total group. And that's what statistics is really all about. It's about analyzing data from a smaller group of possible that's still representative of the entire population. So let's look at another example. Determine whether it's a survey, experiment, or observational study. And then we're going to look at the sample and the population. A driving school wants to determine the main issue drivers face while taking the driving test. They watch and record 30 random people taking the test. Well, this is an observation of study because we're just looking or watching people taking the test. We're not affecting them. Um, so it's observational study and we're going to observe the drivers. The sample is the 30 drivers that have been randomly selected. And the population, of course, is all the drivers that might take the test. So let's look at what type of study we should do for a particular situation. So does this situation call for a survey, an experiment, or an observational study? So a gaming company plans, plans to test whether a new controller is preferable to the old controller. And a group of teens will be observed while using the controller to see which one they use the most. Um, in this case, since we're just observing them, we're not actually changing controllers or whatever, we're going to see which controller they use the most. This is an observational study. We're not affecting the situation at all. Suppose a restaurant wants to conduct an online study in which they will ask customers whether they were satisfied or not satisfied with their dining experience. Well, this is a survey because we're looking at sampling a population based on their opinion. 
Now we're going to look at the very important concept of bias. And um, we're going to see if there is bias or not in a particular type of survey question. Because when you're designing a survey, you want to try to minimize, you want to really try to eliminate, if you can, bias, if possible. So what is your favorite type of music? This is unbiased because it's clearly stated and doesn't encourage a certain type of response. So do you think that poisons such as pesticides should be sprayed on crops? This is definitely a biased question because we use the term poison uh, and that that term right there just could cause a very strong reaction and get you to change your uh, your response based on it. So that's an example of bias. So let's look at designing a survey. The community college wants to determine whether college-bound students from local high schools would be interested in taking a class at the college. Let's say Lewis and Clark. State the objective of the survey and suggest a population and write two unbiased survey questions. So here's just an example. Our objective will be to determine whether the students that are planning on going to the college would be interested in taking a class at the community college. The population will be all the local high school students, but we can't sample all the local high school stu students. So uh, we're going to select a, a portion of that, which would be our sample. And some survey questions would be such as, are you planning on attending college after high school? That's unbiased because it's just, are you planning or are you not planning? And it's not really, not asking any kind of a leading or biased question. Would you be interested in taking a course at the community college during high school? Let's look at identifying problems or flaws in experiments and trying to eliminate them. Suppose we have a research company and we want to conduct a, a study to determine whether our new fishing reel is more effective than the old reel. So we're going to do an experiment and uh, we're going to use the new reel to catch fish in one lake and use the old reel to cat fit, catch fish in another nearby lake that's randomly chosen. And as a result of our study, we conclude that the new reel is twice as effective as the old reel. But there's a really big problem with this study, the way we've designed it. And that is, we used the new reel in one lake and the old reel in another lake. So two different lakes, we really don't know um, about the consistency of the lake, so it's really not going to be a good uh, controlled experiment. We could make this experiment better by testing both reels in both lakes, for example. So let's design an experiment. Um, a research company, we want to test a new food for overweight cats that promotes weight loss. State the objective of the experiment, suggest a population, determine the experimental and control groups, and describe a sample procedure. So we're going to do an experiment here um, to determine a new food and, and whether it's effective or not. So our objective is to determine whether overweight cats, given this new type of weight loss food will lose weight. Our population is going to be all overweight cats, but of course we can't study all overweight cats, so we're going to pick a sample, an experimental group of overweight cats given the food. Uh, that's our experimental group. We have to have a control group, which is a group of overweight cats that are given their normal, regular food. By doing this, we're going to be able to effectively determine whether our uh, new food is effective or not. Our sample procedure is the two groups of cats could be weighed at the start of the experiment and then the experimental group could be given the new food, the control group could be given the regular food. After a certain period of time, we would weigh the two groups again and we could compare that to determine whether there was an effect of our new food. We take a look at studies, how to design them, uh, what are their purposes, the different types of studies, and then looked a little bit about flaws in studies and how we can minimize or eliminate those flaws to have effective studies.